Hi everyone, my name is Mel. I am the creator of the webcomic Prism World on Webtoon Canvas and Tapas. And I am here today just to talk about um, writing. Writing your webtoon script, writing in general, um, all kinds of things, yeah. I've, I've been getting a lot of DMs, messages recently asking for writing tips and um, I, I'm getting I'm getting tired of writing the same things, so I decided <laughs> I'm gonna make this video and I'll just link it to people um, in the name of efficiency, even though I'm just I'm just being a little lazy here. But but I wanted to talk about writing and um, I just my own process for writing web comics. Um, what I did during writing my web comic script, as you can see. I'm not a professional. I do this for fun. This is something I just love to do as a hobby. I love writing. I love making comics. I love drawing. But I'm not a professional, so keep that in mind. Um, take my take my advice with a grain of salt. You know, if it works for you, that's great. If it doesn't, that's cool too. Everybody is different. Everyone's going to approach this differently. So if I can be of use, if if something I say does help you, then that's cool. Hey. Um. I keep saying, um, oh, I'm so sorry, <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> so first we're gonna start off with the basics of writing. Um, not, not like, not like all the little grammar details and stuff. What I'm, what I mean is what you do to get ready for your writing process, um, what you do beforehand, because you want to have a good foundation. You can't just sit down and just start knocking something out because, um, you might burn out over time. So we'll talk about the basics first. You want to make sure you have a comfortable area to work in. And not everyone can control their, their area. I'm lucky enough to have my own room, my own space, I have a desk, and I got this chair from my brother. My old chair, actually I replaced it because I knew I couldn't sit in that and write out my webtoon script for months on end because it was just so uncomfortable. It was old. Um, so I got this one. It works out much better for me. It's comfortable and I can have good posture while I write. Sometimes, <laughs> just try your best to have a good posture because you don't want to hurt yourself. That's just that's just the rule of life. Please do your best. Um, and that's that's part of what we're gonna be talking about too. Um, make sure make sure you have I keep saying that good posture. Have good posture. Um, my computer is actually I use a Surface Pro tablet here for drawing and writing, and it's. If you can, you can't see it, but I'm looking down on it. It's not super comfortable for me. It's kind of hard to see. I can't, I can't get too close to it. I can't get too far away. I have to have it this perfect length, and it makes it hard for writing sometimes. Um, so I had to put it up and get a Bluetooth keyboard, which I don't have with me. I'd show it to you, but um, so I, it was eye level with me, and it wouldn't strain my eyes. So. The point is, don't strain your eyes. <laughs> you know, it's like the posture. Take care of your eyesight. You don't want glasses like me. They're expensive. So take care of your eyes. Get Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth blue uh, lens, whatever that is, the blue lens glasses. My sister has some of those. If you can, you know, just do your best. Take care of yourself. It's like, it's like drawing. Take care of your wrists. You know, don't hurt yourself. Otherwise you're not gonna be able to keep doing what you love. And we don't want that to happen, right? So do that, make yourself comfortable. Um, but in, ter in terms of comfort, also try your best not to work on your bed because it can actually mess with your brain a little bit. Um, I used to work, I used to write on my bed, you know, for fun. it's comfortable. Why would you not want to sit on your bed and write? It's awesome. However, it kind of actually messes with you mentally. It can retrain your brain to associate bedtime with work. And that happened to me. I'm just saying that because it did happen to me. Um, I would get in bed and be like, oh, I should be working right now. No, I shouldn't be. I should be in bed <laughs> sleeping. So if you can avoid it, don't do your work on your bed if, if you can. You know, there's exceptions. If you don't have a desk, not everyone's going to have a desk and that's okay. Work with what you've got. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> it's good to keep in mind. I also, when I was writing, I put limits on my social media because I found early on that I would just sit there and start scrolling. I just sit here and start scrolling instead and then an hour would go by, two hours would go by and I wasn't writing anything. I was just scrolling through social media because I could, I was just sitting there. And you're also on your computer so the internet's right there. So if you can, um, disconnect the internet, you know? Um, put put limits on your social media. I was gonna show you my phone but I have a video recording on my phone so I can't. <laughs> um, put limits. 
develop some self-control. It's hard at first because you, you, sometimes if you're on it all the time, you just want to automatically open it. But you'll thank yourself later on. Um, develop that self-control. Have good social media habits. Work and it, it'll help you to, to um, focus on your work. Okay. Uh, one more thing when it comes to your environment and everything. Try to work somewhere that's quiet. Um, it's less distracting. And like I have said, that's not always possible for everyone to control. My family is very loud. I love them. They're very, they're, they're very loud though. And um, sometimes it's hard to, to concentrate what I'm doing. I'm making this video on a day that everyone is at work because otherwise I, I can't make videos any other day. <laughs> and that's okay. But the point is, um, do what you can, control what you can. I got these, these, um, Noise canceling earphone earbuds. Um, they work really well. J Lab, if you're interested, they work super well. And I made a writing playlist like lo-fi um, video game background music that tend to help. And I would just crank that up and write along with that. So uh, do what works for you. But if you are in a quiet environment, take advantage of that. Definitely take advantage of that <laughs> and be thankful. Now here's another writing basic that a lot of people talk about. Um, it's consistency. Be consistent. Write something every day and that does not mean that you have to sit there and type out 5,000 words a day. Oh my goodness. It just means write something. Literally anything. You can just sit there and write out an entire sentence and be like, okay, I, I wrote something today. I accomplished something. I am that much closer to being done with my script. It's not a lot, but it's something. Because some days you will be more productive. Some days you'll have more time. And I mean, we're all busy. We all have to work and I mean, life is just hard sometimes. Even if writing is your favorite thing to do and you want to do it, there's gonna be some days where you just don't want to. You'd rather not. It happened to me too. And, um, but I highly recommend trying to write something every day or, or editing. If you're not in the mood to write, go back and edit something you wrote before. I mean, I did that as I went. So it works for me and it, it gives you a sense of accomplishment Every day you sit down and you're like, oh, I'm so much, you know, I, I got something done. I got something done. I'm closer to finishing my script. This is awesome. It makes you feel good. It makes you feel accomplished. And yeah, don't worry about the numbers. Just write something every day. Be consistent. Um, so I think I've covered and over explained most of the basics. So now we'll actually delve into the meat of this video, the writing your story, the hard parts. The fun part, but the hard part. So where do you start? Where do you start? Um, who knows? That can be super overwhelming for a lot of people. You want to make a comic, you have some ideas, you, but where do you start? What kind of story do I want? What genres do I want? Well, calm down first of all. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's hard for everybody. And starting is, is always the, the hardest part. But once you get through it, it'll get easier. When I started Prism World, I had a rough idea of what I wanted the story to be. And it took me about three months of brainstorming and plotting to actually figure out the entire thing. And during those months, my story took a ton of different turns. Like, very few of my original ideas actually stayed in the story. It's completely changed since then. So plot and brainstorm your heart out. It can take, and you gotta be patient because it does take time. Um, your first idea is not necessarily going to be your best idea. It might not be a bad idea, but it can always be better. And I'm telling you this from experience. Keep working on your ideas. Keep keep evolving them. They will get better and you'll look at your first ones and be like, oh yeah, it's a good thing I didn't go with that. Um, yes, yes. And most people will tell you that from experience. Don't run with your first idea. And like I said, it's not a bad one. It's not a bad one. Just evolve it a little bit. It'll get better. So brainstorm, keep plotting, um, and be patient. Like I said, be patient. It took me months to do it. And and another way you can brainstorm is have friends or family help you if if you have that available. Um, talk about your story if you want to, if you're comfortable with it. Talk about it out loud. It'll help you um, develop your ideas. Sometimes talking out loud, you, some things click better, you know? I remember when I was younger, my friends and I would always talk about comics, and um, that was, those were when some of my best ideas came out. I was like, oh yeah, we could bounce ideas off each other. Oh, that'll work, that's great. Oh, that's a great idea, I didn't even think of that. 
So if you can, talk to other people about your story, that'll help too. So what if you're not even sure what kind of story you want to write? Like, you have some characters. You're a character creator, you love designing characters, but you don't know what to do with them. Like, they're just sitting there. What kind of story do you want to write? So here's, a, here's an idea. Let your characters write their own story. And you could be like, okay, but I, I created the characters. Like, how, how do they write their own story? Trust me. They do. I'll use, my own, I'll use my own story as an example. I knew when I started Prison World I wanted to write a sci-fi story, but instead of focusing on hard science like my old stories were, I wanted something fun with some fantasy-like elements, and I was like, how do I do that? I was like, how, how do I make this, this sci-fi story more fantasy-like? I was like, maybe my main character can be an artist. You're looking at the story through her eyes. Um, the eyes of an artist, not the eyes of a scientist, like I've done in the past, and and that that was my that was all I had to go on. I was like, okay, I'm gonna write a sci-fi story. The premise and character idea is established. Okay, now what? I literally had no idea. So I went ahead and I started just designing characters, uh, drawing characters. I drew aliens, drew different ideas. And I, I eventually settled on designs I liked. I was like, oh, I like this character. I created Indigo first, and then I created Sienna and Chartreuse. And I was like, oh, I like these characters. Okay, what do I do with them? So I kept designing them, I kept working on them, and I let them kind of tell me what their story was. I, I would I would write, write them out. I wrote out their character arc. This is how I wanted this character to develop over the story. I wanted this character to do this during the story. And then I used those those arcs to guide the plot of my or overarching story. So Zoe is the main character. You know, the entire story revolves around her. But those side characters, they they guided the way she got from point A to point B. And it worked out super well. I highly recommend this if you're having a hard time with your with your with your overarching plot. Go with the smaller plots and let it build into the the the, the big plot. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I'm doing my best here. So you're starting to write, you're getting your story together. What happens if you get stuck? Because at some point you probably will get stuck. We all run into walls, we all hit plot holes, we get our foot stuck and I'm all like, oh shoot, what did I do? <laughs> you know, um, it happens to everybody. So here's a couple things you can do. One, take a break. And I said be consistent, right, every day. But sometimes breaks are necessary. You have to take a break. You're gonna get burnt out if you don't. And I'm saying this as someone who has a really hard time taking breaks. I'm a workaholic, so <laughs> take a break. It's important. Go out and take a walk. Take a few days off. Go read something new um, or watch something new. Do something outside of your typical genres. Like I always watch or read sci-fi. I love sci-fi, everything is sci-fi. So what I did is I, I sat down, I needed a break. I needed to, I was stuck somewhere in the story and I was like, I need something new. So I went and watched some sports anime, <laughs> something I didn't think I'd ever do. And I actually enjoyed myself. I was like, this is fun, but it gave me a breather. Gave me a fresh take on how other people tell stories. And it's just, it's a good, it's a good way to, to get out of that hole that you're in. So I recommend that, try something new. Be, be experimental, do something. So simple but effective, take breaks. And another method I highly recommend doing if you get stuck is called the what if method. And this is something I used a lot. Um, I would open up my document with my plots or open up a new document so you don't mess with the original. I have tons of the same document just saved over and over again with minor changes just because I didn't want to lose my originals. Um, but what you do is you add notes to key parts of the story. If you're stuck somewhere and be like, what do I do now? So go in and write, put, put a space and write, what if this happened instead? So, so your original plot says, this character did this, but you're, you're writing the story and you're like, okay, now what? I, this character did this, but that doesn't really work for me. So you go into the plot and you go, what if this character did this instead? And then you start writing the story from there. What, what would change? What would happen if that character did this? This totally different thing. 
and I'll use I'll use another example from Prison World because maybe that doesn't make too much sense. <laughs> when I first plotted out Prison World, Dimitri was Zoe's older brother. That was the first idea. And he had been missing since she was basically a child. So what, what happened was she found his journal on Earth and it transported her to the Prison World. And that was how the whole story started. Her brother had been missing, she was transported to this Prison World and, and she was in, somehow she was turned into a child. I didn't quite have that down yet. I was like, I'll figure it out later. <laughs> of course, as the story developed, I started running into issues involving Dimitri and other things I can't say because of spoilers, unfortunately. So I went back and started writing what ifs. What if Dimitri was Zoe's boyfriend? What if her boyfriend disappeared? Actually, even better, what if her, uh, Dimitri was her fiance? That way, the emotional stakes are a lot higher. It's not just a boyfriend, it's a fiance. She's gonna marry this guy and suddenly he's gone. What happens? So I just went from there. I started brainstorming from there. The what if it worked out so much better. And then what if she found his journal in the prison world instead, not on Earth? That fixed a lot of issues for me um, in the overall plot. So this method does work. I would give better examples, but I can't because it, yeah, like I said, spoilers, I'm so sorry. So my my original document is full of these what if branches. Some of them used, some of them not, because some of them were not great ideas, but I tried, you know? You never know what'll happen. You never know what will stick. So see where your story would develop if you took an unexpected turn. Throw in a twist, throw in something new completely off, off the wall. It might actually make your story better. Just write what if this happened instead. Okay. We've covered the basics and the brainstorming uh, areas of sections of writing. And so what do you do after? What about editing? What do you, when do you stop editing and writing your story and just start drawing? When, when do you do this? So I'll just say this now, it's different for everybody. Like literally do what works for you. Um, like I edited as I wrote my story and I would spend one day writing, the next day editing because I couldn't continue, like just mentally, I could not continue knowing that my story was the mess that it was. So I edited as I went. This doesn't work for everybody and uh, there are some professionals out there that'll tell you don't edit till you're done. Okay, but I would rather die. So <laughs> I, I like to edit. If you want to edit as you go, do that. If you want to edit after, do that too, please. It's, it's literally just personal preference. I highly recommend making sure you have a plot written out before you start posting a story. At the very least have a plot because you're gonna start and then you might get stuck somewhere and then you're gonna have to take a hiatus for who knows how long while you figure out what happens in the story, which is just like, hey, obviously hiatuses are fine, that's fine. But you, if you wanna do yourself a favor, plot everything out now. Just, just at least plot out everything. You don't have to script it if you don't want to, but get an idea of what you want your story to be first it'll help you in the long run and you will thank yourself later and your readers will thank you too and they'll know that you you care about this story you know it i'm not saying you don't care about your story that's not what i'm trying to say here just just get a good idea of what you're trying to do first that's all i recommend you know have balance that's all i'm saying <laughs> okay but also remember that your story is not ever going to be 100% perfect. You know, even if you're a perfectionist, it's not going to happen. I'm so sorry. You gotta stop editing at some point. You gotta stop writing at some point and just sit down and draw. You gotta start making your comics. So like I have said a million times, be balanced, be balanced, just have fun. Um, it's not gonna be perfect. It's not gonna be perfect. Put away the keyboard and just start working in your comic. So go out. Go out and enjoy yourself. Have fun writing. Have fun writing your characters. Write them. Write characters you love. Write a story you love because your love for your work will show. It'll show. Your readers will know it. And um, you are your comic's number one fan. So while you're writing, don't worry about your audience. Don't worry about your potential audience. Just worry about you, yourself, and your comic. And yeah, I keep saying this. Have fun. Have fun. This is supposed to be fun. We're making comics out here. We're we're telling stories to the world. It is a fun thing to do. You gotta enjoy yourself. So that's it. I had a lot more points that I was probably gonna cover, but honestly, there's a lot we could talk about. Writing is a huge, huge 
thing. I can't, I'm losing my train of thought here. I gotta end this video. So if you enjoyed this video or learned something new, let me know in the comments. Um, if you have your own tips or tricks you'd like to share about writing, um, share them and share your webcomic too. I wanna see it and other people wanna see it. You know, we're out here just um, supporting each other, having fun with our comics. And if you haven't read my webcomic and want to take a look at it, it is free to read on Webtoon Canvas and Tapas. The links are in the description below. Um, also, here is the obligatory shout out to my patrons. Thank you guys so much for your support. You guys are the best. Love you so much. And that is it. Thank you for watching and I wish you all well on your writing journey. <laughs>